This is a tutorial on the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. The Fundamental Theorem of Algebra states that if we have a polynomial written in standard form and our highest coefficient of our leading term, so n, if n is greater than 0, then if we set this function equal to 0, we have at least one complex number solution for x. Well, this isn't really a big deal. Complex numbers, yes, they can be imaginary. So we could say 3i, or they can be a combination of real and imaginary, 2 plus 3i. But numbers like 3 and negative 2 and z 1, 0, these may be whole or natural numbers or real numbers, but they're also considered complex numbers. So if any of these were a solution, then n would be greater than 0. Now the other thing we get from the fundamental theorem of algebra is that n also tells us the number of solutions that we'll get. Now that doesn't mean they can't repeat, but n will tell us the number of factors or the number of solutions that we'll have. So for example, if we had the polynomial x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus 7x squared minus 15x plus 18, then this was equal to 0. Now I'll skip the steps for factoring, but this factors out to be an x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. So our zeros, or our solutions then, would be a negative 3, a negative 3, a positive 1, and a positive 2. So notice these two repeat, so really we only have three solutions. We have a 1, 2, and a negative 3. But because this was to the fourth power, we have four factors so you can think of this negative 3 as almost two solutions, or a repeating solution. So let's take about what we learned about the fundamental theorem of algebra and apply it. Here we have f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x minus 8. And we're told how many solutions does this function have? Well, this is a fourth degree polynomial. So it has to have four solutions. Well next we're asked, what are the possible solutions? Well I can't tell you what any of the imaginary or mixed nut solutions would be, but we can use the rational zero theorem to come out with some of our real solutions. And the rational zero theorem is just p over q is our solutions. And p is a factor of our constant term. And our constant term is this negative 8. And then q is a factor of our leading coefficient, which here is just a positive 1. So what are the factors of negative 8? Well, we can get that from a negative 8 and a positive 1 positive 8 and a negative 1, a 4 and a negative 2, and then a negative 4 and a positive 2. What are the factors of our leading coefficient? Well, the leading coefficient is 1, so the only way we can get that is 1 times 1, or a negative 1 times a negative 1. So if we plug all these in for p and all these in for q, and we do every possible combination, our possible rational solutions then would be a plus or minus 8 over 1, a plus or minus 4 over 1, a plus or minus 2 over 1, and a plus or minus 1 over 1. Or if we simplify that, that's just a plus or minus 8, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, and a plus or minus 1. Because dividing anything by 1 doesn't change its value. So we have 8 possible rational solutions. But we know that this function will only have four. And not all of them 
may be rational. So now we're told to find all the solutions, real or imaginary. Well, we know we have a possible plus or minus 8, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, and a plus or minus 1. So our first step will be to test these using synthetic division. The first one I'm going to test will be a positive 1. So to do our synthetic division, we take our coefficients of our original polynomial, which are 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 4, and a minus 8. A 1, negative 1, 2, minus 4, and a negative 8. Those go in our synthetic division sign. And then on the outside goes the solution we're testing, which we said positive 1. And then do our synthetic division. We carry down our first constant. 1 times 1 is 1. Add it to the next one. That's a 0, because 1 plus or minus 1 is 0. Multiply 0 times our 1. That's 0. Add it to our 2. That's 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Place it here. Add it to our next constant. We have a negative 4. Plus 2 is a minus 2. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Add it to our negative 8, and we get a minus 10. Well, because we have this remainder here, this minus 10, that means that 1 is not a solution. So let's try negative 1. Again, we write our constants and coefficients. 1 negative 1, 2, minus 4, and minus 8. We need our synthetic division sign. And on the outside, we're testing a negative 1. Carry down our first coefficient. That's a 1. Multiply it by negative 1. That's a negative 1. Add these two. We get a negative 1 plus a negative 1. That's a negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2. Add these two. We have 2 plus 2. That's 4. 4 times a negative 1 is a minus 4. Minus 4 plus a minus 4 is a negative 8. Multiply negative 8 times a negative 1. That's a positive 8. Add positive 8 to negative 8 and we get a 0. So the fact that we got a 0 here means negative 1 is a solution. Now remember, if negative 1 is a solution, that means we can factor out an x plus 1 from our original polynomial. And if we factor out an x plus 1, then the rest of our new polynomial will look like x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. And I got this from the leftovers of my synthetic division. The last one next to the 0 is always your constant. So this would be your x term, and this would be your x squared term, and then this is an x cubed term. Now if you want to, you can continue to use synthetic division and keep testing these rational zeros and looking for more solutions. But looking at this leftover of our original polynomial, I can factor this by grouping. If I group my first two terms together, I'll have an x cubed minus 2x squared. And I'm going to factor out an x squared. So we'll be left with x minus 2. Then if I look at these next two terms, I have a 4x minus 8, and I group them together, I can factor out a 4. So we'll get plus 4 times an x minus 2. Well, since I have x minus 2 in both of these, I can factor that out. So I'll have an x minus 2 times an x squared plus 4. And don't forget about your x plus 1. It gets carried along. So now I have a factored form of my polynomial. We've already found the solution for x plus 1. because Remember, this is all equal to 0. That's how we solve for x. x plus 1 gave us the solution negative 1. If I set x minus 2 equal to 0, I'll get x is equal to 2. So there's another solution for our fundamental theorem of algebra, or this polynomial. So x is equal to 2 is another solution of this polynomial. And now we just have this x squared plus 4. x squared plus 4 has to be equal to 0. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get an x squared is equal to negative 4. And then I take the square root 
Well, the square root of negative 4 is an imaginary number. I can think of this as the square root of 4 times negative 1, which then would just be the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And the square root of 4 is 2, so this is 2 square roots of negative 1, or 2i. But remember, when we square and square root, we actually end up with the absolute value of that number, so this is a plus or minus 2i. So our solutions then are x is equal to negative 1, positive 2, or a plus or minus 2i. So notice we have four solutions, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we had a fourth degree polynomial, so we had to have four solutions. 